Welcome to the Garage Network Podcast. Join us and the occasional special guest as we discuss everything automotive, from fixing cars as a technician, owning an automotive workshop or business, overall work-life balance, and even the occasional laugh. In this episode of TGN Talks, we were lucky enough to be joined by Paul Danner, aka Scanner Danner. Guys, this podcast goes for almost two hours, and honestly, we could have easily gone for a couple of more. We talk about Paul's career path, his experiences, and even his learning in the field. We also get a bit of an insight of his life outside of fixing cars. So we really hope that you guys enjoy listening to it, because we had an absolute blast having a chat with Paul. Then, then, then for your for your audience, we'll turn the beauty camera back on. <laughs> 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 there's your there's your thumbnail right there i feel like i feel like there's no going back now it's got to stay on there's no yeah, going yeah. back why don't we keep it on the whole time <laughs> I, feel like you have to. I, th- I think we can change it in the zoom settings and uh paul is just going to be uh mr makeup yeah sensational so- <laughs> there's like there's like some custom settings too i don't i i'm not really sure what the custom does there's that's custom there's there's uh this one's lovely this one's clean just a little bit of blush yeah not this, too this, much that just, one's just this enough. one's definitely that's the one right there that's, sure. that, that's friday night that's friday night yeah okay all right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the first time you turned it on, I actually thought I was seeing things. I'm like, is he embarrassed? What just happened? Sorry, guys, I'm having lighting problems, and, <laughs> and then he just, uh, you know, started blushing up, and then, and then his lips started to match. <laughs> oh, fantastic! I, I think I might go on holiday to the uh, USA, Costa. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you think I, you think I ought to close that curtain right there behind me? No, it's fine. Look, something fine. really, something interesting could come there. We we might see your postman deliver. All right, your, that is true. <laughs> deliver yeah, your, yeah. your new toys. I mean, it's and... snowing here today, which is ridiculous for late April. But yeah. that's typical Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania weather. Is you know we we'll have a seventy-five degree day, maybe even for a week, and then the next week it's going to snow again. That's pretty typical for this time of year. So yeah, right. I thought you guys got out of winter. No. What's that? I thought you guys are done with winter. No, I mean, you know, technically, yes, but, you know, because, like, the grass is growing, the leaves are coming on the trees, the trees are budding, but we still will get snow um, this far north in the States. Yeah, so. wow. Yeah, well. no, I mean, it, nothing that will lay on the ground or anything. It, you know, the ground's too warm at this point, but you can get easily an, an inch or two, you know, that will be on the grass for – for the day and then by the evening it's gone so that that happens it, it's really frustrating a lot uh for us northerners um that we have to deal with this late in the year i mean you'll have some years it won't be like that like the entire month of april it almost feels like summer and so it's just weird weird weather we get for this time of year does that present any challenges for you guys out on the field when you're trying to fix cars or not really well, eh, not really. I mean, it's nothing more than what we deal with all the time. Yeah. You know, uh, we, we live in the rust belt, what we call the rust belt, um, you know, because they salt the roads. Yeah, so that's okay. really, that's really the biggest thing that we deal with um, is because of road salt. We just deal with heavy, heavy rust situations. And uh, yeah, the, our, our Southerners here, you know, they have it, they have it made with some of the stuff and, you know, we, yeah. <clears throat> we, you know, give each other crap all the time about what we're working on. And you'll hear a guy from down South, you know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, say something on a job application up North and be like, no way I'm not coming up there to work on those rust buckets. You know, those yeah, kinds wow. of things. So it's, it's definitely a different ball game for sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think Jeff was mentioning that before. He's from the UK and they had similar issues, right, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, well and truly salted roads and, um, not not a day went by when a job just didn't go completely tits up because of something breaking, snapping, or, you know, yeah, or yeah. losing your knuckles. Um, yeah, th- these guys in Australia, they're completely spoiled, Paul. Yeah, um, sure. You know, there's, there's barely any yeah. welding, barely any brake pipes, no. barely any power steering pipes, you know. No. Yeah, it was all fun. It was all good yeah. fun. 
I won't go back. I ain't going back to the UK. So. Yeah, we only, only, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're like getting welders out and, and, and rust issues, honestly. Unless it's from the 70s or early 80s, we, we don't see it. We don't see it. Yeah. All right. So now what do we call you? Wait, one more thing before yeah. we get started. Check out this shirt. It says, let's see if we can read it. <laughs> 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 So I I, uh, I play uh, I still play ice hockey. I I play in an over forty ice hockey league, and so my wife bought me that shirt for for yeah. my birthday. She gets it, you know. So yeah. I was actually watching um, the one today with your mom. Does she come and watch the game? Oh yeah, she does. She, yeah, she, uh, yeah. I mean, she's <clears throat> she's battling a blood cancer right now. Yeah, I mean, I she. So with COVID, um, it's been a little bit more difficult for her to come just because. Mm-hmm. We have to worry about, you know, just her being around lots of people, um, which there is, typically isn't in an old man beer league. You don't have, you know, it's not like we have a lot of people that come, <laughs> but but there'll be like kids in high school games right before our game. So let's say we have like a 930 in, in, the, in the evening game and there'll be a high school game that's just ending. And so the whole rink will be filled with people for the first 10 minutes before it empties out. And that's, that's kind of what we, we have to avoid those situations and she's, but she's doing really well and she's got, um, you know, all the boosters. And I think she's had her fourth booster now because she qualifies as being, you know, immune compromised. And uh, so, but she still comes and I, I love having mom there and I'll, I'll take her for as long as I can. She's my biggest cheerleader. You know, there's mom watching her almost 50 year old son play <laughs> hockey. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> love it. That's the yeah, best. Definitely. That's the best. Yeah. 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 So we're going to work out what we're going to call you. Like, do we call you Paul, Scanner Dana, Mr. Dana? I mean, Jeff and I just normally call you your highness, but, uh, <laughs> Well, I don't know. It's kind, it's kind of like an automotive Rambo, isn't it? <laughs> well, Rambo. I'm wondering whether we can work something there. You know, um, we'll, we'll we'll work on. We'll, we'll talk about that in our own time. Just, <laughs> just don't hear. Just don't call me Dan. Not no, Dan. no, no. We okay. won't do that. No, we'll <laughs> okay, done. No, my son makes fun of me uh, because <laughs> I get that on YouTube all the time because of my last name's Danner. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, call me Danner, call me Scanner, call me Paul, you know, just don't call me Dan because my name's not Dan. <laughs> and uh, so it's a going joke in my house. Like my my son talks to his um, his daughter, who's seven months old. So I'm a grandpa now. Congratulations. And, uh, and she he he calls me Grandpa Dan oh. just to just to mess with me. <laughs> right. like, let's go, let's go see Grandpa Dan. I'm like Caleb. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna make a note. Call him Dan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I guess people think you know my my last name is uh, or my name is Dan because they thought that you know I don't know uh, to rhyme with scanner that I put Nur at the end of my name, who, which is Dan. I don't know. I just think that would be really stupid. And I've said that in the past. Um, I didn't put Nur at the end of my name. I, I'm, my name is not Dan. And I put Nur at the end to rhyme with scanner. You know? It does have a good ring. It does have a good ring, though, yeah. <laughs> so um, what's on the agenda for tonight, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone. Trust that. And I'm he's going. Gone. I'm, yeah, I'm you're going. going. Yeah. There's a storm outside. I've lost my internet connection. <laughs> <In the room. laughs> what is the agenda? Now you guys can call me whatever. It's it's actually just funny to me now. I, I I'm done being mad about it. Uh, I, I get it all the time. It you know it is what it is. I just accept it. You know. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. What so what 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 I do find confusing is let's say me and Costa were cruising around your brother's shop. And we shout, Dana, which yeah. one of you is going to come? Because you, you're both called, you both Dana. So, no, it would be my older brother for sure. And my mom actually calls him Danner as well. And that goes way back. So when we were in high school, there was in our peer group, his name's Jim, by the way, yeah. uh, or James, James after my dad. <clears throat> but um, there were four Jims in our peer group so all the gyms got last names and so that's where it stuck from and so we've been calling him danner 
for, um, you know, better part of 30 years. And, and my mom does too. She even calls him Danner, which is kind of funny. So, yeah, and I've close. even told my kids as they're growing up, like uncle Danner, and that just never <laughs> sounded right. So like, I, so it is uncle Jim to my kids. Um, but I, I never stuck with the uncle Danner. It just sounded weird, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so I'll make another note. Uncle <laughs> yeah, Danner. Yeah, lots of yeah. notes, lots of notes <laughs> going on to that. Yeah. Well, but, yeah, so yeah. so Danner, you say Danner, and he's going to look first. I mean, of course, I do too. Uh, in different environments, I, I respond to Danner as well. But if if he's with me and someone says Danner, I know they're not talking to me. They're talking to him. Right. Gotcha. I've got you. I've got you now. Well, on that, so you obviously you guys are both techs, right? So he's got his workshop as well. So the last video I watched, you were actually in his workshop having a, a play with that EV water pump. Um, what made you guys decide we're going to become technicians? What was the calling? Hold that thought for one second because yeah. I have a cat. I have a cat, <laughs> I have a cat in a box. Yeah, he's, like, he's in a box. He's trying to crawl in this box right next to me. And it's disturbing. Get out. Out. Crazy cat. Here, we'll put it here. Let's see if you guys see. It. <laughs> yeah, so the next, the next shot, you're gonna see probably at some point the cat's gonna crawl in that box behind me. There That's you go. A nice <laughs> then, then when you hear the rustling in the background, you have some context. Excellent. Okay. Um. So, well, um, you have to forgive me too. Sometimes I have a hard time hearing. You guys have some heavy accents. Okay. So we'll slow so, it down. We'll slow yeah, it no, down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Austra to me, Australia and and Great Britain, like your your language sounds very very similar. Um, okay. But the uh, like the Australian accents a little bit stronger. Am I describing that uh, properly? Yeah. I don't know. To me, it, to me it is. Yeah. So you have to forgive me if I ask you to repeat yourself. But I think you asked That's me right. about when we started. Our shops, like my brother first, you know. What, yeah, what was the uh, calling? What made you decide, I want to be a technician? Oh, I want to go fix cars forever. That's what I want to well, do. <clears throat> that's a tough one because uh, it might be different for my brother. I mean, we both mm -hmm. needed some direction, you know. Um, we both hated high school and, um, you know, we just kind of fell into the field. I think I took. Well, I took auto mechanics in high school in, so we have in our, in the States, we have um, vocational um, colleges that in 11th grade, uh, you're, you're given the option to take technical classes at a different school for half of the day. So they'll bus you over and, and then you can take any of the trades like carpentry and, and auto body and auto mechanics. And my brother actually took carpentry. I took auto mechanics for no other reason than uh, I just hated high school. I just yeah. hated high school and I just, you know, I mean, I, I really didn't apply myself then. I, you know, I learned how to smoke weed in the bathroom without the <laughs> teacher yeah. smelling it. I, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, that was my mindset then, yeah. but then my brother, my older brother, he went to Rosedale technical college after um, high school and sign up for auto mechanics. And I was surprised when he did that because, you know, I was the, in the auto mechanics program in high school, he was in carpentry. I'm like, oh, I didn't know why he signed up for that. And he's a year ahead of me. He's a year older. So he, he went to Rosedale tech. Um, and I really just followed my old, older brother there because I was already in auto mechanics. So I took two more years of, of post secondary, we call it. So kind of a trade school, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where it started. And I, I remember sitting in classes and thinking, yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to do this for the rest of my life, but this is just where I'm at right now. And yeah. and uh, that was kind of the beginning. And then I got to electrical, the electrical class. And I was just like, wow, this is this is awesome. Like, I, I you know, I was still smoking up all the time and class <laughs> didn't matter, but I, I really, really enjoyed sitting there um whether i was baked or not I, I was still able to pay attention and electrical was 
absolutely fascinating to me. And it's still to this day, it kind of, it, it, it is that interest. You know, I still have it. I still love it. Um, you know, you can't see it, but you can, you can see its reactions and it's just really cool. I, I still, still love electrical. And that's really what kept me in this field was the electrical part. Yeah. Right. I, I guess that's kind of uh, taking me to my question is, is um, how you went from being a tech to uh, a diagnostic tech. Mm. Um, obviously, it's your love for um, uh, wires and electrons and, and things like that, you know. It's, yeah, I, I like yeah, it. That's, okay. that's why it's, it's still a passion now. So, I, I you know, it's, it's kind of a really neat story, too, on, on the full circle and where we are. But the garage that my brother owns was my very first garage that I worked for when I graduated from Rosedale Technical College. Yeah, wow. So they hired me as this long haired, you know, uh, pot smoking, uh, you know, I mean, I, they didn't know I smoked weed. I hid that from everyone. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I had really long hair. It was, you know, halfway down my back. I wish I, I had some pictures to share with you right now. It'd be good for your, uh, for your community. Maybe make that a thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, while we're talking here, I'll see if I can pull that up. But um, I um, I started in this garage where my brother not that my brother now owns. It was that was my very first garage, and I was the only technician. They hired me out of school because it was two guys that just opened the shop, a engineer and a twenty year Mercedes Benz tech who came together. They were lifelong friends. Built that shop. Hired me. They just needed. Uh, you know, they needed someone they could afford. I'm right out of tech school, so I was affordable. And it, it was the perfect environment for me to learn how to um, troubleshoot because it wasn't a very busy garage. And every car that would come in, I'd have the option to touch it. And so right off the bat, I started to, you know, um, exercise that particular muscle. And I think it really is that when it comes to troubleshooting, um, if we can equate that, since I mentioned hockey, you know, to get good at playing hockey, um, you need all those stabilization muscles in your, in your, um, in your uh, ankles and in your, in your calves and in your shins, like you get on a set of skates and you're real wobbly and you can't, you don't have the strength and over time, now you're standing straight, your strides are clean. You know, it's just like that when it comes to troubleshooting is you have to exercise that part of your brain. And I, it was the perfect environment for me to learn, for me to make mistakes. I always told my, my students over the years, like I had this drawer full of good parts in my toolbox and, and those came and, and I asked them, where do you think this drawer full of good parts came from? <laughs> and they came from bad calls because <laughs> if, I, if I, if I threw a map sensor at a car that I thought needed a map sensor and it didn't fix it, well, where did that old map sensor go? The one that I replaced, well, the old map sensor went in the drawer in my toolbox. Cause I knew that was a good one. And then at least the next time I think I'm going to, be a parts changer i at least have a part that i can try and make sure before we make that call so it just yeah. takes time to get good at it and i don't know i'm kind of rambling here no um, making sense fine okay making sense making sense absolutely <clears throat> but yeah so it started right there from the beginning and and i, I just um i learned quickly can i say this uh i learned quickly that um, even a 20 year tech, um, in the field, uh, was a parts changer <laughs> and, mm. and I don't have to name names, but, um, I learned within a year of working under the 20 year Mercedes Benz tech that when it came to technical questions that I had in this particular, say flow chart, I could no longer ask him. And I was kind of on my own. And that was actually a good thing because I had to research as much as I could. And this is before internet days, so I couldn't just Google it. You know, this is me grabbing a manual of the car and, you know, sitting down and just reading page after page after page. And just, you know, that's just what yeah, you did. Wow. So, yeah, definitely a harder time. I think we're spoiled for choice right now with the amount of information and data that we have sort of at Absolutely. our 
fingertips, like literally a click away. It, it's, it's amazing. I still Absolutely. think there's something nice about reading a book, though. Yeah. You know, you yeah. can you, you can put something in between the pages and know where you're at on the internet, I suppose. You know, you can save a page instead, but I don't know. It's like a book. Who doesn't yeah. like a book? I, I agree. I, I, and the stuff you can get in a manual, especially the, the actual factory at the time, you had books for certain cars. If you could get your hands on a factory service manual, that was where it was. And yeah. I, I had one for, I mean, not always. <laughs> I had an 85, like, Nissan 200 SX. And I remember the factory manuals on those. They just sucked. <laughs> they <Yeah>. still do. <laughs> I, <Yeah>. I'm like, <laughs> you know, you're following a flow chart, and it's like, instead of, like, yes, no, it would have abbreviations like NG. And you're like, what the hell does <laughs> NG mean? And I, I guess I learned, I just interpreted it as not good. <laughs> good so no go this way so instead of saying no or it'd say ng like come on just to keep it spicy just to keep it a bit spicy yeah 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 well that's interesting so you ended up so that's the workshop you started at is the workshop that your brother now uh runs yeah. and, and and you also started at rosedale tech you know you're teaching at rosedale tech i know yeah wow exactly. that's awesome yeah that's awesome and so so to, to um, expand on that just a bit, when I was there for a year, uh, my brother was working at a BP, uh, just a gas station about a mile away, and I got my brother hit a job there working with me. So it was a, a year in for my career, um, I got my brother in that shop. So it's me and my brother working at that shop um, for the next three years together before I we parted ways and they, one of the local chain stores built a store uh, close by and I jumped ship and went that way and he stayed. So um, he stayed in that garage and he's been there ever since. And, wow. you know, then uh, 25 plus years later, he bought the place. Yeah, so wow. pretty cool stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. What a story. Yep. That's awesome. And then I worked uh, full time for about eight years in the field before I went back in early 2000, no, late 2000. I started in the field in 93 full time. Late 2000, I went back to Rosedale Technical College. I was hired uh, as a young instructor. So I was like 28 years old when I started teaching um, at Rosedale Technical College, which is where, like you said, where I went to school and, you know, now, now I teach there. So, yep. Full circle. How good's that? I know. Wow. Now with, um, obviously doing that training, um, is there any advice you can give some of the guys that they can potentially, like obviously cars are evolving rapidly at a very fast sure. rate. And I think yeah. that keeping on top of um, those technologies are proving very difficult to truly yeah. feel the pace that they change. In the last five years, I reckon they've evolved more than they have the past previous 20 years. Um, is there any advice you can give to any of the guys out there that are sort of struggling with keeping up with it? Yeah, I think I think the advice that I give to myself, honestly, mm -hmm. is that um, don't be afraid of it because even though technology is rapidly expanding, as, as you said, what I'm finding is old technology in a new location. And so I, I believe once you learn foundational electrical principles, that those don't really change. Yeah. And you may have some unique way that something's being done now. But when you when you lean on these fundamentals that you learned and practiced, and it's those same muscle groups we talked about, you're like, you know, you might need a little bit of good description and operation on, on what they're actually doing. And then once you break it down and you're like, Oh, well, I, I know that it's just like this. Or it's just like that. You know, it's like finding a, a shorted or open in a can network is no different than finding a short or open in any other wire that I've ever, or circuit that I've ever worked on. And it yeah. can be just as frustrating. It, it can be just as easy um, and sometimes there's no shortcuts. And then, you know, you have people that, that would say, oh, can networks. And 
you know, but it's, yeah, it's it real. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See where you're going, man. Yeah. But, but it, I, and I understand that, but I, I meant from a standpoint of like, like, oh, they're so complicated and we can't do that and we can't touch that. And that is nothing could be further from the truth. It's the same stuff. What happens when there's an open? What happens when there, there's a short? The, there's the same principles apply. Yeah, I think it's, I think we just need a bit more exposure to it. I think that's what it is. I think we're we're scared of it because we just haven't had the opportunity to have much of a play with it. Hundred percent. Yeah, I think it's some sort of magical box of wise, but it's not. You're right. It's it's, it's yep. end of the day. They are just wise. Yeah, and and it's still to me in ways a magical box as far as the can network chip that's in there and how they construct it and what's actually inside of it and. Those kind of things, once you start seeing the faults, just like you said, you need to see it. And mm-hmm. once you start seeing it and touching it, then you can picture in your mind like what's actually happening, what fundamentals can you can you rely upon? And then you you just use that in, in your troubleshooting. And it, sometimes it doesn't matter how much knowledge you have, you have one that is still gonna kick your ass, you know. Absolutely. Like I I I was you know, I mentioned when we were doing our test yesterday that I was going to do a CAN network fault and we're not done. I'm only halfway done. I walked away from it out of frustration uh, on what I was seeing. And I've learned, especially with a camera in my face, so difficult sometimes yeah. to walk away because I want to just finish. And as a technician in the field, your ability to walk away is very easy because you just go grab another car and you go do something else, you know, do some breaks, do so, do an alignment, do something that you can rest that part of your mind. And while you're doing that job, you you have these light bulb moments like, Oh, I forgot to do this or I forgot to do that. And I have learned because I don't have that ability anymore that I need to walk away. And even if I'm, even if I'm only there like an hour, hour and a half, that's still long enough. Once I hit that two hour mark, I start going in circles and uh, I'm better to walk away and then come back the next day. And so that's where I am currently with this can network fault. That's got a short to positive on the circuit. Mm-hmm. It's like, where is this copper to copper short? And that's what I'm talking about. It's like any other circuit where you'd have a copper to copper short. It affects the entire circuit and it can yeah. be anywhere in that circuit. <laughs> anywhere. And there yeah. is no there is no special class I need to go to on CAN networks to find this fault. I promise you. So, so it's this there. Is, this is why I hate CAN network faults. And, and you just <laughs> you just solidified it for me, thanks, Paul. You mean uh, you can't smoke machine yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, I would love to. Yes, let's put yes. Let's put a, a wire sort of battery weed. pause. And let's let's let out the smoke. <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> let us know how that goes. goes. Yeah. <laughs> you see, um, so, so um, that can take me to my next question, Paul. And that is, um, we all have one of these. But what is your what is what's your no car? You know, if I was to call you and say, "Hey, Paul, you know, I've got a uh, X, Y, and Z car waiting for you at the shop." Ooh. What would be the um, car point you'd be like, Jeff? I'm sorry, I'm washing my hair. Yeah, I, I usually <laughs> I usually don't uh, these days because the challenge is there and our, my my <laughs> job descriptions change so much. But um, it's usually European cars, anything European, and and the only reason why is our service information for European vehicles. I struggle on more than any other manufacturer. And, and that goes to my friend, uh, my friend, Tommy Wolf. Um, he's done some videos for me too. Um, he, and he's, he's got a YouTube channel. It's positive lead diagnostics. He's a former student, real close friend. And he, um, he works for Volkswagen. He's a Volkswagen master tech. And, and whenever he tells me that, Paul, I can't find the service information I need from the manufacturer to fix yeah. this car. And that just solidifies to me what I'm seeing with the European market, which is why are, why do they hide this stuff from us? You know, I, I don't I don't know. I just struggle the most with Euro cars. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I, I guess I give you an example. It's like I I, I had a, a 
Volkswagen in with the class a few years ago and we were, I can't remember all of the aspects of it, but um, we were working on the wiper circuit and, or no, we weren't, we were not working on the wiper circuit. We were doing computer power and ground tests of computers in the wiper cow area. And when we were done, the wipers didn't work. And I'm like, what did we do? What did we touch? What, what is going on? Pull up the wiring diagram for the wiper circuit. There is no mention. There's no mention of the hood being open, preventing the wipers. Uh, I, do you know, I, knew I was going to say it. I was going to say it. I knew it. So. But that's a perfect example. Like nowhere, nothing in the description operation, nothing in the service info. <laughs> Nothing on the wiring diagram. I mean, just draw the hood switch <laughs> on the diagram, please. There goes a full day of diagnosing. Full yes, day. hours, hours. <laughs> and I'm with my class, and I'm looking foolish. I'm looking like an idiot. Like, what What did we do? We, we didn't even touch this wiper circuit. Like, yeah. what? And I'm thinking, what did, my, what did my students do? They ran a yeah. jumper wire to something, you know? Yeah, so that's a good example. It, that, you know, that was just, a real that was a real common car to be failed the um, yearly inspection. Uh, you know, it was uh, Mark Mark Five Golf um, Jetta and things like that. We'd get them back into the workshop. Oh, that that MOT's tester he's a, he's an idiot. He's tried to he's tried to work the washes with the uh, bonnet ajar. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was that was really really common. But he threw it, it definitely threw us all out when we first saw it. Like, what's up with your wipers that only came in for a bulb or you know? <laughs> know. It's awful and, and that's a good example though of like we just need service info if if manufacturers engineers and actually i learned over the years it's not even the engineers that are writing the flow charts so you know i've been bashing engineers for 30 years only to find out as i start talking to engineers they're like, hey, we're not the ones that write them. We just pass the cert. We pass that information on to the person who's writing them, and so it's bad all the way. But if we could get, <laughs> if we could get more of the description and operation of things, mm-hmm. we could fix so many more cars so much more efficiently. And that's the stuff that we dig and we dig and we dig and we dig for. Not, I don't want your stupid ass flow chart that says test this wire and if it's no go this way and if it's yes go this way and have no idea what i'm testing and why if i know what i'm testing and why then it within this flow chart then i'm gonna follow it much more efficiently and with much more accuracy and it's that stuff that's missing hugely missing across the board on every manufacturer is description operation proper voltage levels what should it be here yeah. don't tell me if it's out of this range or under this range tell me what it should be and that helps me so much more and we just don't have that information yeah that's we've got even less so we've got no information we've only, <laughs> so we've only just got right to repair past probably the end of last year and it's only coming into play mid this year so up wow. until up until then, it was hundred percent voluntary. Uh, and guess how many manufacturers voluntarily, voluntarily. gave yeah. up? Yeah, gave up their data. I think it was GM and Toyota. That was it. Wow. And everyone else was like, "No, nah, can't buy it. Don't even you can't even buy it. It's a full stop. Wow. You have no access to data." So we're only getting that June this year. So June thirty first is their. I can't D-day. imagine. Yeah. I would be looking for another trade if that was the case. <laughs> there's a lot Look, of, um, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a, like, it's been hard, like you're saying, especially when you're looking for even something as simple as a wiring diagram. You cannot get Oh my get goodness, it. I can't imagine. I can't you imagine. Know, for, a, for a Corolla <laughs> or a, you know, anything, a normal vehicle, that's not even a, a thing that's, you know, you expect to be difficult and you don't know, is it an earth switching or power switching? Well, let's go work it out. Wow. We don't know. Yeah, wow, that's yeah. that's crazy, and that and that if that doesn't reinforce the need to understand your your fundamentals, then I don't know what does. Because if, yeah. if you don't have a diagram, there are ways you can dissect a circuit and figure out its design. But you know, you still need a wiring diagram to help you. Yeah. But there are other ways, you know, with some voltage checks. Yeah. 
uh, on a, say, two-wire uh, solenoid that you know is computer-controlled, you can definitely identify circuit design and know which one's the feed, which one's the ground, which one's switched, which one's not uh, by some simple voltage measurements. And I just can't, I just can't imagine dealing with what you guys deal with. I can't yeah. imagine it. So yeah. every, everyone's very excited. Everyone's very excited. We're hoping that um, it makes our life a lot easier. Uh, but yeah. again, I'm sure it's going to be hurdle after hurdle because I mean, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens June 31st. Right. We'll have this like, conversation again. How- yeah, how much backdating do you get when you get this right to repair? You know, how far back will they give you that service? Well, I'll, I remember, I think it was seven years. They only have to do it was seven years, Jeff. I think it was, they only have to give us seven years back. That's uh, it. Yeah. Wow. That's it. Any older than that, it's not their responsibility. Wow. I could be wrong. I cat. How cute. So we, have, we have four cats and two dogs here in this house, so. Yeah, love it. <laughs> I don't know why. It just happened. Yeah. It happens a lot, yeah. Yeah. I've never been really a cat person, but I'm a dog person more. But we, my son had this little cat um, kitten that he got, and he named him King. And that cat uh, was King. And he was such an asshole. That cat was <laughs> such... But he was so cool. I loved him. I loved him because he was such an asshole. Yeah. You know, like... <laughs> I don't know what it was about that cat. It just really, you know, he just, his own, yeah, first cat I've ever really been like. Yeah. And my son just moved out. He just bought a house and my oldest is gone. I have two kids that are out of the house and and uh, he took his cat. I missed the cat more than him. I told him he should leave his cat. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we, can, uh, we can edit that. We'll edit that out, yeah. <laughs> uh, call it 100 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, is, is that Caleb? Uh, that Caleb's my second born. Uh, Jacob is my oldest. So Jacob just uh, Caleb actually moved out first. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. Jacob moved out to go to college. He lived on campus or just off campus for you know the whole duration of being at college. And then when he graduated college, he moved back for about a year and a half, saved saved money because he didn't want to rent. He wanted to buy a house. And so he lived here uh, and then he just did that. So last week he closed on his first house. And so he's, he's now gone permanently. So he's my, he's 23, Caleb's 21. Well done. Good on that. So, and Caleb, Caleb kind of was, was blessed in um, picking up the camera for dad when he was 16. I'm like, Hey, Caleb, you want to make like, I'll pay you like 15 bucks an hour. Come, come hold this camera for me. And let's just see how it goes. And that's where his career started with me when he was 16, when he was still in high school. And now he's 21 and five years with me now. He works for me full time. And, you know, dad pays him well enough that, uh, you know, he he was able to um, buy his house too last year and, you know, get married and and have a family. And, you know, I'm not going to stop him because he's young. Why would I, you know? That's right. So. And, and the benefits of working with my son are just, I just can't even describe it to you. It's just so awesome. It, it works really well. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I remember clashing with my dad many years ago and, you know, we weren't designed to work together, but I, I think, um, I think you and Caleb, you, you're, you're a real good team. And, you know, sometimes I've seen you there and, and Caleb's like, you know, made you a red face and the steam coming out of your ears. And, yeah. you know, you you never, maybe, maybe he's just really good at editing, but, uh, you, you know, you never seem to lose it. There's, there seems to be a good balance there. So, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, okay. He is good. He's good at what he does, man. And, and I, you know, I, it's funny because I, I've always connected with, I have four children. So just talking about my older two here and each, each kid's different, but, um, my oldest one, Jacob, like he's really into sports and he's athletic and we'd watch football together and it it was real, real easy to connect with him. And I remember Caleb, um, you know, growing up, like it wasn't, he was just different. He, he, he didn't like sports. He, um, he was very artistic and, you know, things I'm not, you know, and it's hard as a parent to connect sometimes, with a child that's different than you and, you know, connecting like real, you know, like intimate and special ways. And, and, um, 
you know, over the years, you know, I learned that Jacob, who was real easy for me to connect to, and Caleb, who wasn't, I found things. And my wife encouraged me to do that. She's like, find things you have to, that you like to do together. And Caleb loved to camp, loved to camp. And I love to camp. And my oldest one didn't. And so we we start connecting through that. And then, and then hear this artistic, very creative child to pick up the camera for dad. And then, then to start becoming the editor where he can use his his God-given talents and gifts, like just see him just blossom in this role was just something I just never expected to happen. And, and, and then through the camera and it, it, I, I really wish that we could have recorded those early days of the moments is, you know how you hold the flashlight for your dad or hold the yeah. light for your dad. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm telling you, it was that I was like, if we could have not chopped those and kept the original footage of his camera work. And it's like, no, Caleb, I said right here, you know, not in my like, face. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, you know, like just being dad to your son <laughs> and Caleb was forced to endure those moments with me. Because I was paying him. If he wanted money, he needed to stick around. He couldn't walk away. And so <laughs> it, he learned through that how to how to deal with me. Like Jake always knew how to deal with me. He wouldn't talk back. If I was angry and said something, he would just be quiet and give me a second. And Caleb would always bark back, you know, and like, I, and that would just make me more angry and but it was cool though like he learned how to deal with his dad by working with his dad and our, our relationship has never been closer no it's just it's so awesome but you know what you can tell in the we're talking about this with jeff earlier even the quality of the editing the video camera like you actually see the evolution of how much better it's getting as it's going along it's actually really like it's very sharp i was watching the again i was saying the one with the ev the ev one you guys just shot yeah the, um, water pump on fire out it's very sharp i know I, and that's it's all so him good. that's all him 100 yeah. percent him i've completely handed the reins over to him yeah, well done. And, and i do have people that have been following me since 2011 where when i first started filming that i used to just you know use a tripod or whatever and that was mm -hmm. it and some people at times comment that they miss those days and they want me to go back to that. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I won't. I'm sorry that you don't like the style in, and they don't want to see the camaraderie and the banter. They just want the facts. And you know what? I'm not going back. This is yeah. the way it is. And this is my son. Just what you said. That's my son's evolution that you've watched yeah. because I've 100% given it to him. Like when we, when we do our filming, we'll do the case study and stuff. And of course I'll, he's just capturing all of that. And then he just goes and does his thing and it'll take what people don't see is one case study per week. I mean, it takes us a week to edit it the way yeah. he edits, you know, if it's a two hour case study um, or whatever, it's going to take him a week to put it together. And that's all him. I don't touch it till the very, very end. And I, I watch the end. And I'll say, you know, hey, we need to add this note here or this note there or, um, hey, I'm missing a little bit of context here. Can we pull that back in? And even those are few and far between. Literally what you guys see is pretty much 99.9% .9 all him. Yeah, well done. Well, shout and out to Caleb then. He's doing really well. That's, yeah, yeah that's for really sure. Really and good. this is a kid who didn't have any education on cars whatsoever. Yeah, wow. Well. That has learned – has learned to, because he's with me so much now, he's learned where to cut, where not to cut, what yeah. to keep, what not to keep. And I don't have to tell him. I don't have to tell him. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. It, yeah. That's a kid who could tell you what, you know, a a can network is, but can't change the brake pad. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, like the, it's like the complete opposite, like, uh, progression of, of things. You yeah, know? well done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent <laughs> can that he keeps talking about can networks it's just like crypto now yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is sometimes it is yeah you know it's like you say practice yeah. um 
It just seems, seems, seems to be something that me in particular falls over with. I think it's just because um, you haven't had a chance, mate. You haven't really had much yeah, exposure yeah. to it. Um, obviously, my roles do a bit different nowadays. Yeah. So, but uh, I'll wait for you to get one in the shop, Costa, and that. Uh, yeah, next and, one uh, I get. Yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll do some swearing videos. Yeah, <laughs> nice. it'll, be, it'll just be a long beep the whole video. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I think you know what though. I I remember having a student ask me. This is like two thousand and four. And this is one of those students that I, you just really, I just didn't like him at all. Never liked him. <laughs> he was just such an ass. And I, 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 I don't know if we're bleeping these out. I'll be careful. Nah, nah, oh, no, you no, you go, you go. Yeah, that's okay, probably like, the most, uh, yeah, nicest one we've had. Yeah, I, I mean, I, he, but he, he would like to egg me on and he knew it. And he's like, my, he worked for some dealer and he's like, my boss told me if you're not teaching us CAN networks that, that I shouldn't even be in your class. And it's like 2004 at this point. And I'm like, I had just heard of a can network, right? I don't, I don't, I'm not teaching can like, and anyway, I guess my point was, is anytime this new stuff comes out, everybody always like talks about it. Like, Oh, Oh, that's going to be awful. That's going to be awful. That's what they said about fuel injection. When we went from carburetors, like it's just, the it's, it's just something different and it's you still have opens you still have shorts you still have sources powers and grounds and you know okay we, then we have communication and i don't really know how that works anyway i never did did you know how like uh the zeros and ones are interpreted and what chip it goes into into the module board and no i'm not the engineer i don't build that i don't need to know that i don't need to know that i'm not designing the car so let's dumb it down a little bit and open shorts powers grounds communication Look for that signal. Look for that signal. Here's your voltage range. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing now. And, I, you know, I've never, you know, in my textbook that I wrote over the years of teaching, like I never wrote anything on can because I didn't touch them enough. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm now uh, I'm going to be teaching a class here in the middle of May. Um, I'm going in to substitute for one of the teachers and I'm actually going to probably set up my very first classroom uh can uh awesome. and and it's it's only but it's 2022 it can's been around for you know almost 20 years and yeah. and i'm just like you so don't feel bad jeff like i it's not till lately the last few years that i'm really starting to see the can network faults come my way and that's just what it takes to really learn it you can sit in a class all you want all day long doesn't matter until you start touching it and seeing it then you can apply it and exercise that muscle group and and then you find out well this ain't no different this is still gonna suck finding this short the power (laughs) and i'm like what where do i look for this problem just like any other circuit that i'd have a copper to copper short you know where is it inch by inch that's how you should yep. find it, yeah. <laughs> yep. But, oh, you're right. I remember when, well, I don't remember it, but because I'm second-generation mechanic as well and or technician, and, and I remember my dad when fuel injection just came out, they're like, we're going to be out of jobs. There's going to be nothing yeah. to fix. Yeah. No more points. We're going to be adjusting points anymore. You know, right. no more float adjustments. That's it. There's no more car. Nothing to fix now on cars. Right. That was so wrong. Right. <laughs> that was so and, wrong. You know, that's the same thing we're hearing about the EV too. Correct. It's like, yeah. oh, wait till everything <laughs> goes electronic vehicle. And like, wait do you wait do you get an EV and all these controls? And I'm mm. like, um, we are already doing that now. All right. Yeah. Electric motor controls, you got solenoids and you got switches and you got modules and you got you know, all the same stuff. The only difference is we're not going to have to change oil anymore. Yeah. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay yeah. with that. Bring them on. Whatever happens. Like the people that talk like that. It, it, it's it's just, the same thing, just more voltage. That, that, that's yeah. what it's going to be. Yeah. Well, sure. The high voltage circuits. Yeah. I have a big learning curve, as you saw in my latest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and that's I can see the struggle. I can see the struggle. Oh, yeah. of- I just want to, sure. I just want to touch it, but I can't. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, especially on camera, like I didn't <laughs> want to do. 
I did not want to show something because trust me, if I do something wrong on film, I hear about it like not just a thousand times, but a thousand, no, uh, 10,000 times for like 10 years. Like I still hear, you know, (laughs) so I was not even going to approach that at all on camera. I was like, Caleb, we're done. I'm like, (laughs) we're we're walking away from this. I'm not ready to do this yet. We don't have the equipment that we need. And you like my brother's orange glove he put on? Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was making fun of me yeah. when he scared you know, a glove. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. But yeah, no, I'm not. Especially when it comes to the high voltage circuits yeah. and safety, mm-hmm. is um, I'm gonna have to. I don't. I don't know. I, I. I have. I live in some strange times, and I say strange for me because in the past before I ever turned a camera on, I had many, 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 many years of experience in, in case studies and procedures. And I knew what was safe and I knew what was not safe. And, mm-hmm. and now these days, the cameras kind of caught up to what I know. And so everything you guys see, um, I guess what people don't realize now is I don't touch a car unless I'm on camera. And so what that means is I'm touching a a fraction of the cars that I used to. Mm -hmm. And so it takes me even longer to see the things that you frontline guys are seeing. And so by the time it gets to me and I see it and then, you know, you guys are like, well, I've seen that a million times. How is Danner just seeing that now? That's why, because I'm just not touching them unless they're on camera. So that's a real struggle for me with new stuff because I don't want to work on the car unless I'm on camera, A. And B is uh, sometimes I'm not ready to work on the car with the camera in my face, as you just saw on the hybrid vehicle. So what what do I do? Like, this is a legit question to you guys and then to your community, wh- what do I do? Like, uh, what's my, what's the best way to proceed? My, and, and I, I'm anxious to hear what your community says, because my idea with this is, you know what? F it. I don't care. It doesn't matter that I don't know. I'm going to say, I don't know. And let's just learn this together. And I'm just right. going to do it on camera. And I don't care if I look stupid. I don't care if I look like uneducated this is what it looks like for every single tech out there the first time they see it and you're going to watch me struggle and that's that's kind of what i've in my mind and in my heart that's how i'm going to proceed and i, I don't think, know i think that's a that's the way to do it <laughs> just just learn on learn on the job so to speak you know i think, I think yeah. that's that's the way to do it's, it it's yeah, the, only, the only downside of that approach is going to be you know, we live in an information age and the information age is one where, you know, if I plug in this code, I could probably do a Google search and find a YouTube video where someone's seen this problem and can guide me through it. And for me, um, I've never done that in the past. Like all the stuff that I've learned um, has been when I touch it and see it and you know, and I'm not saying that I don't do that on occasion when I need a little bit of help. I do, uh, but very rarely because I don't want to. I just live in a real strange environment because I don't want to let other creators influence what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So, and I feel like when I watch other YouTube videos, I end up critiquing myself and criticizing myself and looking at myself too much. And I, I just don't want to do that. Like, I just don't want to do that. And so I feel like, I could watch a YouTube video of somebody else doing it and then film my own video and make myself look like a hero. Cause look how much Danner knows about this. And we have to be honest with each other. That's what a lot of people are doing. And, and they're not wrong in doing that. They're right in doing that because then that keeps the viewer more active, more engaged, um, easier to watch because then you have someone that can do here's a, B and C, you know, follow it in this order. And this is what you find. Here's your problem. Those are great videos when you're working on the car in the shop and you need an answer right now, that's perfect video for that because you don't have time for the description, operation, the mistakes, the 
stuff that I'm talking about what my videos are going to be. And, and so I, in, in my heart, I, I realize that um, the path that I'm walking will not be for everyone. And I guess I'm okay with that. I really am. I, I've always been about teaching and more than it, I, it is the fix. And there'll be a market for what I'm doing for the learner who's new. He'll want to see someone who wants to learn, truly wants to learn and not try to get an answer for the car. Yeah. What I'm talking about will work for them. And that's why, I, that's why I, I'm, I'm doing it that way. Well, I think that's why a lot of people watch it because you get to see the mistakes when they happen. It's real. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you're learning. I could imagine it'd be probably harder because you're sort of learning under a microscope with everybody watching. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas when we're learning, we're learning. We've blown something up. It's like, well, no one I, saw that. I, hang on, just you know? just one second there. I, I I love it when you know. I, I like the realism of it. You know, you know what? I, I like it when you've been bleeped out because shit does go wrong. So <laughs> bleep me out. You know, the, you're working on a car. Of course it's going to go wrong. The parts are going to be wrong. The, the new module that you've bought twice is still crap. It's nice to keep yeah. it real because we, we've all definitely been there. Uh, I'm picturing. Uh, I'm picturing the video of when you when you was it you sparked out that ECU and Callum was like, oh, yeah. like zooming. Oh, every time I watch it, I crack up the the, the facial. <laughs> the facial. <laughs> and that was a, added some music or something. It was like it was so good. <laughs> he does that so? Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll do that now in the clips. Like we we'll, when we watch a when we have a video, he'll pull those in and he'll work with him and I. He still comes here at my house and edits at times because we have this really, really awesome uh, editing computer and he'll work here during the day. And, and when he's upstairs laughing, I know he's found something <laughs> and, he's, and I just let him go. And, you know, he'll spend a good bit of time on those things. And I don't care. It doesn't matter. I pay him what I pay him. And, and it doesn't matter because I know it's going to be gold when he's done. And, you know, we and we release those on Facebook. So I have this like. I have this uh, playlist of all of those clips, like on my on my page. There's, where, you know, there's a better one than the than the Arc in ECU, and that's what that's for. Uh, that's when you inverted the airbag module. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay, let's let's bash Paul down in there. <laughs> yeah. You know what's but funny? That's is, what makes it real, though. I find yeah, that, no. that that's the engaging part. I believe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then just owning up to the mistakes is important yeah. and, and staying humble. And it, you know, humility is a good thing. And it really, it really has to do with that. And it, it has to do with being able to laugh at yourself. And, you know, I tell my kids that all the time, especially my daughter, who's she's 13 and she's growing up in an age of, you know, the girls with their, you know, here, let's do it one more time. And this will be a good example. <laughs> Where's my camera settings here? Let's see. I uh, wanted my beauty camera back and I, I don't know where, what happened to it. Uh, oh, anyway, no. um, you know, we live in this, we live in this world. Oh, there it is. Where, <laughs> where, <laughs> you know, look at me, right? We live in that, we live in that world. Okay. So especially for the little girls, you know, <laughs> uh, have <laughs> sorry oh, wait no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> but like <laughs> we live in this environment where you know it's all always about you know look at me look at me look at me and having a having a little humility and being able to laugh at yourself and is is a really really healthy thing yeah. um just for yourself just for yourself and I don't know. I, I don't mind doing it and it's fine. You know, I, I like to laugh at myself and I like to look at my pains too. And you know, that airbag system one was perfect example. And, and we just talked about that yesterday on the can network. Cause I, I had to unplug the airbag module and it was a Ford. And I was like, I still had PTSD <laughs> from that. Like I did. I was like, I'm telling you, I like made sore battery was disconnected. <laughs> fuse was pulled before I unplugged that airbag module. And uh, you know, you, you live and learn. So yeah. let my I, mistake. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I wish I didn't bring it up now, but uh, no, it was, no, you're it's good. still my favorite one. <laughs> you're good. We use it all the time. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, in the, I think in the hybrid um, video we just did last week, Caleb pulled that clip in because I was like, well, I'm not going to teach anything unsafe. And Caleb's like, you mean like the airbag module? And then he <laughs> pulled he pulled in the bag and it blew up again. That was in the last video. So we, yeah. <laughs> we use it all the time. We, we still poke fun of, of that too. And we'll be doing that again for this case study when we get it done. I think it's important. Yeah. I think it's important. So like when I know when I've, had apprentices that I've worked with before, letting them know your mistakes and we make them as long as we can walk away with a bit of extra knowledge when we make it. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? Like, yeah. hopefully you don't do it again. And as we, yeah. like Jeff and I have spoken about this before, like as you get older, you, you don't stop making those mistakes, but you just hope they become less frequent. That's all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? I agree. And what, what better way to not make that mistake than to watch someone blow an airbag? <laughs> I mean, you you heard about it before. We've all heard about airbags accidentally yeah. deploying. We've never seen that. No, well, I caught it on camera. Uh, we yeah. have it. And we also learned a valuable lesson that day, and that's why the manufacturers didn't run any external grounds on that module. Because in case you were some dumbass like me <laughs> that decided that decided to leave the key on while you had that module in your hand, Nothing would happen because it has no ground. Yeah, okay. Why did it blow up? Because this smart guy figured out there was no ground. And I wanted to do power and ground testing on the module. That's the whole reason I had it out. So yeah. what did I do? Well, I gave it a ground. <laughs> gave it a ground. <laughs> I gave it a ground. I gave it the missing ground it needed. I, oh, there's no ground. Okay. It's grounded on the housing. Okay. So let's run a jumper wire to ground and, and let's finish our tests. Bam. Thanks. <laughs> so, so the module works. <laughs> oh, it was oh, awful. So funny. So you know, um, I agree with that. Oh, so so important, Costa. Yeah, no, that's it. I think that I think it's important. I think the that um, obviously it will be harder for you learning under the microscope, but I think that a lot of us techs that are still learning with you, I think we can take away a lot from it because we'll be learning yeah, with you sure. realistically. Like for sure, for sure. And yeah. I, I'm I'm not you know my videos are not set up for the for the guy that's in the shop and wants to watch a 15 minute video for mm -hmm. a particular problem. Uh, on a particular car that they have. It's just not what my videos are set up for, yeah. uh, but that's okay. I'm okay with, I've always taught the learners, you know, I'm a, I'm a teacher. I've, I've been teaching at the technical college for 20 years now. And I, I've always had a new group every eight weeks. I get a new group of students, new group of students, new group, group of students. So I'm, I'm always focused on teaching them procedures and methods and reasons i'm doing what i'm doing and not just showing you know the process and the fix um but caleb and i have also uh um when we started this and i i need to continue it we called them um uh <laughs> what what I'm, I'll tell you guys you'll get a good laugh out. we we talked about the names of what to call these i called them like uh scanner dan or quick tips is that is the title we came up with right yeah. i have these quick tips videos and caleb's like we should call it <laughs> uh scanner J <laughs> scanner dan or just the tip i'm like i don't think that we can do that <laughs> um, i didn't think we could do that <laughs> just <laughs> just a tip i mean it, it <laughs> Look, it's so funny. It's, it's like perfect because it, it okay. like the now it is kind of yeah. that. But yeah. <laughs> what we've been doing is we've been taking our like fifty minute case studies and then cutting them down to like ten minutes, okay. and not not using those uh, or eliminating anything we're doing. We still do everything that we normally do, but taking like the older videos and say and it's been helpful for me as a teacher say i want to take um and emphasize that the ohm meter is not your friend right um when an ohm meter and i like the way matt fonslow says it best is when an ohm meter measures good um it can still be bad let me rephrase that when an ohm meter measures bad it's bad but when an ohm meter measures good it can still be bad and so those lessons we need to teach 
And so I have this 50 minute case study showing a bad computer ground on an intake manifold that has corrosion, like on the stud area where, where the eyelet bolts. And if you were to measure that circuit with an ohmmeter, at the computer, like the manufacturer flowchart has you do, you'll read zero ohms of resistance to ground, perfect ground, but plug it in, turn the key on voltage job, test that ground. And you're seeing four five, six volts on that ground. And mm -hmm. so I've used that video countless times in my classrooms, but it's 50 minutes long. And I just want, I just want the tip. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've taken We've taken that 50 minute video and I made it and cut it down to a 10 minute one that shows the ohmmeter, shows the voltage drop test. It gets right to the meat and potatoes of it. Um, so I can use that then in my class to emphasize that point. I can use that then for that guy on that video that says, hey, why don't you use an ohmmeter here? My, my reply instead of a big, long typed out thing is, hey, watch this 10 minute video yeah. and here's why. And, and so that's what we've been doing. And what's cool about that is I have like a thousand videos, literally more than a thousand videos now between my two channels, probably 500 on premium and then 600 on YouTube to pull from that we can do this yeah. um, and, and, and set up a library someday. I only have 10 done. <laughs> yeah. I have like, you know, 1100 more to go, but I want to do that. <laughs> Get <in> <laughs> But there's so many pieces like that that you guys know that that watch what I'm doing. Like there's that just that little nugget in there, you know, that I want to pull out and and have that easily searchable. And so I I do I guess my point in in all of that is I do understand both designs in filming and what they're for, you know. And mine are more set up for the learner, not for the guy in the shop that needs that answer. But I yeah. believe that I have the material at some point in time to put that together for that guy that does need that help right now. That's not just looking for a silver bullet. He needs to understand why. And I, I'll never teach to the silver, silver bullet, Pete. Yeah. But I yeah. understand the guy that doesn't have time to watch a 50-minute video. He's got 10 minutes. He needs a nugget of something. Mm -hmm. and, and I have those guys in mind, too, and I'm, I'm working on that. So. Can, can when you do send them out to people, can you be like, here's my tip? Or how are you gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, sorry. It doesn't it's get any better, Paul. It, or doesn't, just the it tip. doesn't get any better. Yeah. It, the past yeah. is going downhill right now. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I will bring up one just tip. A short video that, you, that I actually shared around our network as well, and, and we had a lot of um, um, comments about it. The comment about um, charging Diag. There was ah. this little short video you just made because yeah. pretty much what you said, you spoke to my heart. I always used to say, why is it the better we get, the more efficient we get, we make less money. Why are people yeah, doing this to themselves? Like, yeah. And I always could not understand when guys get really good at things, oh, but it only took five minutes, so I didn't charge it. That makes no sense to me. No sense whatsoever. And and I think you you articulated that so well. I like that's per exactly right. Exactly Appreciate right. Appreciate that. So, yeah. I yeah, think and that's, that's and that was one of those things I'm talking about. Uh, is a nugget within a 50 yeah. minute case study, and and we we pulled it out. You know, for that reason, I was like, Caleb, we need to pull that out because that that you know. I get that all the time is how do I charge? How do I charge? And you're right. There's no reason we should be making less because we're more efficient. Yeah. You know, it's, it, 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 and some people's arguments to it are just absolutely ridiculous. If you, if you read my replies to, to some of the, the comments in that clip, uh, or if you read some of people's comments, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Their perspectives are just wrong. And, Unfortunately, there's just so much wrong in our field mm -hmm. that it's no wonder the customers have this negative attitude toward diagnostic time because they've the only diagnostics they know is parts being thrown at their car anyway. So, of course, they don't want to pay for diagnostics. Yeah, and so when amazing. people see that, you know, when the customer sees that clip, he doesn't like it because he doesn't really understand that I'm not talking about reading a code and changing a part here, Mr. or Mrs. Customer. And that's what they think. And so 
We just have a lot of problems. We have a lot of voices we need to make sure are heard. And that is absolutely one of them. What you said, Costa, is no way. No way a guy that has the experience that now can find that problem very quickly should be making less. No way. Yeah. I, I, I'm very much what you were saying. I'm very much agree with all, all of it. We have like a even an hour workshop. It's a minimum fee, whether it's five minutes up to, up to an hour, it's up to an, an hour. We actually, it's up to 45 minutes because we allocate 15 minutes for customer conversation and the questioning we give the customer. Um, but yeah, if we nail it in, in five, 10 minutes, well, that's because I'm, we did a good job. Like yeah. it's not going to, I can't understand it and, and it baffles my brain, but I think you did a good job yeah. at explaining it. I had a lot of guys were commenting and agreeing with what you were saying. So I think he just gave them a bit of ammunition on to justify for themselves. So I think we do sometimes, I think they have a hard time justifying it. And, you know, sure. and it comes from trying to help the customer and making sure, sure that they're, you know, keeping yeah. the customer happy, but we've got to stop the shortcutting ourselves. That's the Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, we have so many things against us on that mm. front. We have the part stores that offer, you know, free diagnostics. And, yep. and so we're, we're training we're training people to think that scanning and reading a code is the diagnostic. So no wonder they don't want to pay for it as a cut as a customer because they're being bombarded with false information. Yeah. So we, we, we got to fight that too. You know, yeah. we, we need to educate our customers on what a diagnostic looks like. And fortunately for, for, for me, I have a thousand plus videos of showing you why, what a diagnostic mm -hmm. is. And I don't need to, um, you know, to, to try to pull from somewhere else to try to prove it. I can just pull one of my videos and say, here, well, if you really want to know, watch, you know, this car had a, uh, you know, a map sensor code, but it was a, mm -hmm. it was a restricted catalytic converter. Like it never needed a map sensor. So you're going to change the map sensor, then the engine computer, because that's what the code said. And the map sensor mm -hmm. code is still there. So then you put a wiring harness in it, still didn't fix it. And all you have was a plugged exhaust and somebody spent, you know, $2,000 a year money. And those customers, they do know because they've been burned and, and they, you know, now, now that customer is going to seek out a diagnostic guy. And I get that all the time too. It's like, Hey, Paul, I want someone who troubleshoots like you, but I live in new Orleans you know, Louisiana, which is, you know, a thousand miles, 1500 miles away from me. Can you help me find someone? And so, yeah, man, just like what you guys are doing, it's awesome. When, you know, if, if I have mm -hmm. someone that reaches out to me in Australia, right. That's where garage network is based right. out of. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I can be like, I can have confidence and be like, Hey, you want to go seek out this group, the garage network, and within there, we can find you someone that can do what you need. You know, I think it's awesome. Well, so I our think, networking is going to be key with that. Well, we, we, I don't know if you remember, we did that a little, little while ago with a guy in Tassie, in Tasmania. Oh yeah. That was you guys. That was our group. Yeah. We actually, you That's think it was, right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. And when one of the, one of our members uh, went out and, 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 um, and caught up with, I think it was one of your viewers. And yes. went, drove down, tested it for him, and I think it was beyond repair. Like the, it was beyond was repair. That a state of the, beyond repair, but but the fact there. that you know, I forget his name. Was it Paul? I think his name was Paul too. Oh, Jeff was it was thought, Paul, wasn't it, Jeff? His name was. I think it might have been. He, he was a lead mobile guy. Well, no, was it? Um, he, ne he, he never let me. He wasn't called Paul, but he, um, I remember at the time he he. He, he wouldn't take any money. He wouldn't. Yeah. I, I never no. got a chance. To, he, even I, never... try, I tried to say, I was like, dude, like, let me give you some money. You know? And yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> well, you talk about, like, helping people, too, and, and that can come full circle. We're talking about, you know, charging people and, and charging for what we're worth, and that's all all good stuff, and we need to do that on a regular basis, but also being able to help people who are in need and, and the fact that your network jumped in like that, I forgot all about that. I don't even remember the scenario. I think it was someone who was on a wheelchair and they just reached yeah. out to me and they, they didn't it, have it had, the means. It had all the elements of, uh, I, I do remember it had all the elements of being not genuine. Oh yeah. We, I'll be honest. We, we spoke about it for about, 
for a couple of hours. Like Jeff and I were like, <laughs> we can't find. First, not going to lie, Paul, we thought this sounds, this must be a scam because it just doesn't yeah. make sense. You know, there's too much yeah. going against this poor guy. It doesn't make sense how this poor guy can have so much bad luck, right? And then yeah. Jeff and I were like, well, we don't, if we don't find anyone in Tasmania, it looks like we're going to Tasmania. <laughs> but luckily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we did consider going Absolutely. to. Um, I think I. I think I remember, uh, I, I'm still, if I remember, this person doesn't speak very well either. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a communication issue. Um, I It was a woman. I, I'm still in contact with her. I ended up sending her a book. And, awesome. and um, well done. yeah, and it just, you know, I just want to thank your network again for that, because that was huge to be able to reach out to the community and be like, hey, I have this person. They need some help. Will you help me? And I offered to pay for it. I wanted to, I didn't mm. want it to be free. Um, I wanted to pay for it and take care of whoever would do that. And whoever you are that did that, I understand why you didn't take any money and you didn't take any money because to you, it was worth it to help someone Absolutely. out of the goodness of your heart and to take money cheapens that feeling. So yeah. I get it. And I want to thank you for that. But I want you to know, too, that I never expected, I never expected you to do that for free. And you did. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff we need, honestly, on a global scale yeah. in this day and age is to be helping each other out, you know, to, to look, you know, we talk about this, this day and age, a generation where we've taught our children about self-esteem, right? And self-esteem, self-esteem. What we should have been teaching this generation is to esteem others more than ourselves, because look what self-esteem brought us, a bunch mm -hmm. of selfish mother effing people, right? Yeah. We, if we esteem others more than ourselves, imagine the world that we could live in, you know? So. Totally, absolutely nailed it. Agree. You know, you got me feeling quite bad now. I can't remember his name. <laughs> I'll find him. I'll find I'm, him. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm on it. I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm trying to find his name, and I, I feel a bit bad. It's just not coming to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We. Yeah. He was absolute legend. You didn't want to know about money. He. He was just not. It's. It's, it's a network thing. It, it's all good. You know. It's all good. Which is look. That's what networking is. We all work together. We're all helping each other. It's. It's. It's all for the love of it. So. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. That's all. I think I oh I screwed up. I had a garage network shirt. I think upstairs. I should have put. Yeah. That, I should have put that shirt on. I sure I had one. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we would have sent you one or two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that all good. All good. Oh wait, we've got a serious question to ask you though. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a very is, serious is it, question. Is it, this is the biggest question. So ever, so, so Jeff and I here have a bet riding on this. <laughs> Uh, okay. don't let, do not let and, me and, down, Paul. And, do and, not let me and, down. And I don't gamble, so it's a big call for me to make a bet here with uh, Jeff, right? Yeah. So um, your task is you are going to a deserted island. There is one car there. It is a non-start but cranking. But you can only take one tool with you to diagnose uh, it. What are you taking? Oh, uh, I think... Let's see. I mean, I know, I know what the bet is going to be is probably the test light, but, <laughs> but I could probably make a test light out of an existing turn signal bulb. Um, so I think in light of that, Hmm. That's a tough one because I was <laughs> – listen, I was in <laughs> Panama. I was in Panama a few years ago, about five years ago, and I had to do this no-start on this Panamanian car, and yeah. I had nothing <laughs> with me. I, I had a, I had my Vantage with me, my little MT2500 little tool, yeah. but the battery was dead. I couldn't, <laughs> crank it. I couldn't crank it long enough. I had no way to jumpstart the car. and I remember um, that it video. Would, I and it wouldn't video. start. It yeah, wouldn't yeah. start. And I need, I had no way to check fuel pressure. I had no way to confirm fuel. I needed to have some fuel source. I don't know. That's a tough question. It's either going to be a test light or a can of, of uh, carb cleaner. 
Okay. <laughs> so so I've I've lost the bet there, Costa. So just for that, Paul, I'm I've got the guy's name in front of me and I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well what was the bet? I needed what did you think so, I'd so, bring oh, okay. I, I thought so, test light for sure. It's gotta be the test light, I thought. Um and I said but, um I said I thought you might have gone for your advantage. The old well, it, that was there. I was thinking of a lab scope. That was definitely in there. Like the test light, the lab scope, uh, one of those, one of those two. So you're you're both right there. And but I uh, I might settle on a can of carb clean too. May, maybe because I, I, I can make a test light. I can make a test light out of out of something on that car. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, I don't know. That's a tough one. There we go. We'll leave, we'll leave you simmer with that. You can get back to us and let us know if you made a final decision. <laughs> yeah. And um, and just for the record, it was Corey Barker. That's it, Barker. That went to look at that car. So, uh, Corey Barker, if you're watching, uh, thank you very much. I do apologize for forgetting your name momentarily, but. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, big deal. That was a big deal, man. You know, to good. help, was, some, help someone out. And that was a big deal. That meant the world to her to even to know that someone would care enough yeah. um, to do something like that, even though we didn't get the car going. Um, the fact that we could tell her to stop trying yeah. to make yeah. this car go and look elsewhere um, was just absolutely huge for that family. And uh, I can't remember her name, but I, I know the situation and, and don't I, get me looking again. <laughs> I should, I probably have no, it it's somewhere. Fine. No, it's yeah. fine. We don't need to mention the, the people's yeah. name anyway, but the, the <laughs> she was, the she was, that, she was very nice. Uh, I remember yeah. having a chat with her. She was very, very lovely and really appreciative. So yeah, that's cool. I think she was like, um, she couldn't type. So everything she did was like speech to text too, right, uh, from yeah. what I remember. So it was definitely hard to read her texts, but uh, yeah, huge deal, man. Huge yeah. deal. You guys but are how, awesome. How good is that? Made that happen all the way from, from the US. Oh, it's That's... Janet. Oh, my wife just um, mentioned her name was Janet. Janet. It, it was, Janet. yeah. Uh, and so while your wife is, uh, I, I'm sure everybody hey, remembers hon, the we, video. We have a question for you. She can't hear you, but I'll, I'll relay it. I'm sure everybody will remember the video of, of your wife putting the toilet roll on the toilet roll holder. Oh, uh, the toilet that paper was, uh, video. That was sensational. Uh, <laughs> she's laughing. She's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see my rebuttal like years later on what to do? <laughs> so I did a quick one. I was like, how to avoid dealing with the paper, t uh, the toilet paper. I was like, when you have a couple sheets left, you just leave that one and you reach down and grab a new one and work <laughs> off that one. <laughs> and then you put it back and don't say anything. So then the next person that uses it uses the last sheets. And then look, you never have to touch it again. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just taking more tips. You just said it. I've got the same from got call you, Dan. Uh, Uncle <laughs> Dana. And now toilet paper. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I, t I tell you what, I, like, um, I, when I was, I told my uh, my missus the other night, I said, oh, so, you know, we've, we've got a podcast with uh, with Paul Dano and and she knew, she's never seen you, but she knew exactly who you were. <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's uh, a lot of people are like, turn that bloody Paul Dano off. <laughs> you know, when, yeah. when the, I, I hear, trying to sleep. Yeah. I do hear that. I do hear that. Like I, I have like, uh, comments from wives that are like, I wish you would shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, that's hilarious. So I, I have got to apologize. I've been coughing a bit. I, I've, I've been taking my medicine. I've not been uh, drinking small bottles of whiskey. I'm, I'm just trying to stifle this little tickly cough I've got. So oh, I do, that's I do so apologize. Good. I've been trying to hide it, but maybe not. Yeah, so well. no, you're good. That that tickly cough. That's usually that's usually where it starts. So yeah, take your take your vitamins and. You know. I, it, no, it's definitely the end. I'm definitely it's definitely going now. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, Pat Crowley, give me uh, give me COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. It's a long I've story. Had it, I've had There's it a twice. story behind yeah. this, Paul. It's but, been uh, awful. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's not, it's not good fun. Yeah, who cares? We're gonna have to learn to live with it. That's really where we are with it. So, 
that's what it is, right? That's there's no yeah. option now. I just got to be careful with my mom and keep yeah. her, you know, anytime anyone's sick, you know, we got to watch for her. But other than yeah. that, you know, we got to learn to live with it, not, you know, do these crazy things we did if there's the next round, you know, yeah. like crushing people's lives is not the yeah. answer. Well, know? we had, well, down in Melbourne, we had, we had the world's most locked down city, um, yeah. which we just had the, recently had like a double A. So we had the double A, double A expo that was last year, which is the same guys that run Apex yeah. down in, in the States. So we had that big expo on, uh, which was good to see people back at it and, and sort of lively and people. Yeah, sure. it, was, it, was, it was nice, nice to see. Well, I don't, whatever it is with Australia, um, they changed their shipping too for us. Like we can, I can pretty much ship a book anywhere in the world using um, our postal service for about $26. So no matter where you are, I can send it. But yeah. Australia, they have something still in place that they won't, they only allow priority packaging from the U S postal service. And so that makes me, that makes my shipping like my book to your country, $70. Yeah, wow. um, so right now, even right now, I cannot ship a book for less than $70 to Australia, yeah. but I can ship, I can ship a book to Zimbabwe for 26. Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. I've, um, I've, I've recently bought the book as well, but thank you. Uh, oh, I felt you. it. I felt yeah. it. I felt every dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. I bet you did. I bet you did. Oh dear. Yeah, we've got some wacky stuff going on. It's all good. It's coming to an end. It's all good. So is, is Jeff, are you in Australia too? Yes, I'm uh, in in the um, in Sydney, um, not too far from Costa. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, uh, I'm on like the east coast in the gobs country, uh, the northern beaches. It's okay, but you're beautiful. from the U you're from the UK. You said yes. Was, um, yeah. Okay. I'm actually not too far from uh, Steve Scott. Okay. Um, he's in like that northwest part of the UK, and 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 yeah. Steve Scott's also a, a bad influence. Um, we we met <laughs> up with him at, uh, at a show in Melbourne a couple of weeks ago, and he made us oh, drink nice. lots, of, lots of beer. Uh, That's so. okay. <laughs> I, I, I wish I was there with you. Yeah, I love yeah. Steve. He's my bud. Yeah, we, we all. It was our first time meeting, and um, let, time, you know, let, let's say uh, clothes clothes were getting swapped. <laughs> in a good way <laughs> you know i've seen i've seen stuff uh along those lines with uh you, there was a group of guys that came last year or the year before to a to a tst uh event i think or super saturday event i think it was and and uh i drove my it was nice because i drove i'm close i'm like four hours away so i drove my rv there and i maybe you guys saw pictures of it um, but we had like a fire in the parking lot, legit, like after classes, yeah, and awesome. just drink, just drinking beer and hanging out. And it was just a, the best time ever. It really was. It's so cool to network and, and meet you guys like in person. And I, I hope one day that I can come your way. I've had invites to Australia before. Uh, the TAT is another network down yeah. there uh, that they, they've been asking me for years. I have some friends in that network too, to come and, yeah, it's just it's hard to it's hard to balance everything I'm doing, and yeah. you know I I I need to be a family man first, and and I I need to not say yes to everything because if I say yeah. yes to everything, then oh, I'm going to lose my wife, and that's not yeah. worth it, you know. So, and and we so can we can do so much online. Uh, yeah. It was going to be a question, like yeah, when when can we uh, send a plane to pick you up and bring you to Australia? Yeah. But it. It's a, it's such a long way, and yeah. you know why don't we utilize the tools that we've got? At the end of the day, you can you can go and uh, you know have a, a a glass of wine with your wife, and and yeah. not have to look at us for two weeks in in Australia. You know, yeah, but you know maybe one day. I know my wife wants to come, so one of these times, you know, um, it, it, if we if we make it there, uh, she 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 needs to come with me, and and then we yeah. need to make that happen. That would be great. Okay, so Costa, I'll um, I'll, yeah, I'll just take him a message Paul's wife now. We'll, take, take, uh, take him more notes. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll we'll we will we'll get the ball rolling. <laughs> show, show me the um, the 
beachfront uh, cottage that we were staying in, and we. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, in, we I'm, I'm in one now. I'll just move out for a few weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'll have to feed the dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's sweet. I love dogs. I'll feed the dog. Sounds oh, good. Yeah, yeah no. He's, um, it, we, we, if it ever comes to it one day, we we can certainly. Um, help make it happen but uh, yeah. in um, the meantime we'll, we'll, show you around we'll, when you're here. we'll deal with virtual poll until, until what happens promise oh, we won't have we won't have any European cars for you to fix when you get here <laughs> promise <laughs> you lie <laughs> yeah. I'm lying yeah yeah, yeah Land just, Rovers uh, Volvos and Renaults all with Paul's name written on them yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you guys work on a lot of diesels too, right? Diesel. Don't you have a big diesel market as well? <laughs> we do. We have. A I get that question. Yeah. I get that question a lot. You know, here, you know, guys that aren't in our country, especially like, hey, why don't you do more, you know, diesel case studies? And we just don't have them. Like diesel cars are are literally there's probably more more hybrids on the road than there are diesel cars. So we, yeah, well. we don't have. I mean, there's a ton of our fueling stations or gas stations there isn't even diesel fuel there because we wow. don't have very many diesel cars at all so no we, de- no, we definitely have a fair few and we are definitely dealing with the consequences <laughs> of um the wrong vehicle for the wrong driving conditions um you know but that's that's for a different day yeah, yeah. I-, I love diesels don't don't yeah, don't this the diesel yeah i'm a, I'm a fan Yes. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that, you know, I mean, I, I was exposed in a real way with the diesel powertrain on my on my RV because I had to be, you know, mm-hmm. and, and just what they do and the power that they make is pretty, pretty phenomenal, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I still think the future is going to be some form of electric. I do. I just think I think that once they perfect the battery, you know, maybe when we can get away with some other element that's not lithium or if they can perfect extracting lithium from ocean water. I don't know if you guys know that they can do no. that. Do um, not there's, that yeah. There, there's like, I've just been reading some articles on, on the D uh, on pulling it out of, let's see, I forget exactly the article, but pulling lithium out of salt water is able to be done. But unfortunately the, the, way that they extract it um it pulls the salt out too and then contaminates the rod that they pull out to get the lithium but now they've got it down to like one to one it was like a hundred to one um and i forget how many uh, billions of tons of lithium are actually in the ocean water um so look for that look for that like if they figure out a way to pull it from there i think also look for if they find another element that's more readily available, mm-hmm. it really is the battery, in my opinion, that's the hold up for the whole show. It, once they perfect the battery and for people to say that they're not going to, I think is short sighted. I think once the battery is perfected and it is cheaper to produce and it's easily able to be quickly charged, that would be the other variable in there too, yeah. is charging them. Uh, once that happens, there's no reason why we don't do it, you know, especially when we do have the abilities, not that renewable energies are the way that they need to be now. And I agree the coal fired, you know, power plants is 40% of production and that's not the answer either. But the fact that renewable energies are available to us, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like, I, I mean, as an investor, uh, you know, I'm 50, I'm, I'm eyeballing 10 more years. Like I'm heavily looking at the EV market in, yeah. in, in my, in my investments. Cause I believe that's where it's going. Well, that's, that's the consensus. I got when we went to the last show just a couple of weeks back, it was very heavily pushed on EV and ADAS systems. So, I mean, for the yeah. industry pushing that way and on all technology and the money being spent that way, you're going to think, that's the trend. The trend's going to go that way. Yeah. yeah there, there was some talk in Australia about hydrogen and and hydrogen cells and all this stuff, but I mean, 
But aren't, yeah, the, aren't the hydrogen cells? I don't know anything really about hydrogen fuel cells, but aren't they aren't they making electricity with those, or, or are we using that to burn? Is there an internal combustion engine on that? I think they've got an ice engine for that, but they've also I heard about only just on the weekend actually about um, there is a hydrogen water cell or something that creates electricity with some sort of chemical reaction, but I haven't looked into exactly. But I would just. In that one, what you just said would pique my interest because if we yeah. can if we can make a clean, non carbon emission, no CO two producing yeah. way of creating electricity, then all of that's going to go hand in hand uh, yeah. with all of this. And I, I know we don't have the infrastructure and all of that right now, and all the all the voices say nah nah nah. Well, you know, all the voices in the horse and buggy days when the internal combustion engine came out, they're like, never going to happen, yeah. never going to happen, never going to happen. I really believe right now we live in a day that is comparable to the horse and buggy transition to the internal combustion engine. That's yeah. where we exist right now in this time frame, in this environment is that. And if I could go back in time as a, as a horse owner and a horse trader and a horseshoe maker and all the businesses that were involved in the horse and buggy, those are going to be the loudest voices that say never going to happen. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what, that's what it's, it parallels exactly where we are. That's right. And as an, <laughs> as an investor, I'm investing in the, in the internal combustion engine way back then. And I, you know, you with me on that thought process? So yeah, absolutely. We're, we're on. We're on the. We're on the brink of a change here, and uh, it's exciting to be part of it. It's exciting to watch, and I don't think us as technicians have anything to fear on any front, no matter which way it goes. Because guess what hasn't changed? Electricity. It yeah. hasn't changed. And learn your fundamentals and, and lean on your fundamentals. And when new stuff comes around, yeah, it'll be confusing at first, especially if it's a Euro car and they don't give you any information. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but once you have it, once you have your information and you, you know, you you lean on your fundamentals, you just go with it, man. We'll be fine. We'll have jobs. Even if the cars drive themselves and people don't own cars anymore and you know, you get on your phone on an app and you type in, I need to go to the grocery and a car picks you up in a couple minutes out front with no driver. That's kind of where we're going. Yeah. Guess somebody's got to fix them. Somebody's got to fix them, right? It's not just going to be robots fixing the cars. We're going to have to have the human mind involved in fixing these cars. We'll be fine. We'll always have a job. There's always going to be things breaking and there's always yep. going to be work for us to get to. And That's right. I think you are right with the fundamentals. So I spent a bit of time um sort of rebrushing up my fundamentals and realizing that wow because i haven't been using them wow they've quickly disappeared <laughs> so yeah. it, it's really important that's a really good message that i hope that a lot of guys hear as well now on that my, i want to also ask you one more thing yeah. if paul danner could go back and speak to an 18 year old paul danner any advice? I'm sure you've probably been asked before, but any advice you can give an 18 year old Paul Denner? Hmm. Let's see. I mean, I, I hmm. that's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, Take your time. I mean, I, I, I guess I, I kind of, as far I'm thinking automotive related, because that's really what I want to encourage yeah. the 18 year olds that are out there now yeah. in the automotive field, like what. Okay, I got it. Um, discouraged, feeling discouraged in the first couple years in the in this industry because it's one that you know maybe you went to school and the school you went to said, "Hey, you're gonna you're gonna make this much money when you graduate school," and and then you graduate school and you find out the guy that just got hired he didn't have any school and you guys are making the same wage and you're like you're discouraged because maybe the school lied to you or maybe your perspective was wrong. Um, I want to encourage that person and say that this field involves hands-on. You have to touch it. You have to touch it. You can't, it doesn't matter what your schooling is. doesn't matter any of that when you first start because lefty loosey, righty tighty brother, right? You can't be turning that bolt the other way and breaking it, right? You still yeah. need, you need to touch it. And so I say, give yourself three years, 
three years for that real heavy learning curve and, 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 you know, on a different topic, the guy that had school uh, is going to be light years ahead of the guy who didn't three years down the road and his pay is going to be hugely different. So I want to encourage education, of course, but I'm just saying, don't be discouraged as you continue in this field, it gets better and better and better. And you open the next door um, that, of opportunity that's in front of you. When you open that door, there's going to be two more doors after that. And then after those, you open one of those doors, there's going to be five more doors. To, and and this, this field is awesome in that your job will not always look like this. And I think yeah. when I sat in the garage and I was discouraged, I'm like, I don't know that I want to do this for the rest of my life. Um, you won't be. So be encouraged. What you're doing right now will not look the same five years from now. I promise you it won't. And if it does, it's your fault because you're not willing to learn and continue to grow and learn this technology and learn how to troubleshoot, really specialize. Maybe it's not like I did specializing in electronics. Maybe it's specializing in something else. Specialize in something. Right. Yeah. So that would be that would be what I'd tell my 18 year old self is be encouraged. It will not always look like this the way it looks right now. Beautiful. Love it. Well said. You've got a good way with words. Damn it. I don't have that skill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with the gift of gab. Costa. Yeah. Like I've been, you know, I've, I've gotten to stand in, in, in front of people and, and say that before, you know, I, yeah. and so I just kind of leaned on, on uh, a muscle that's been developed from before. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Familiarity. Yep. Excellent. All right. We've almost cracked to almost two hours. How good is that? <laughs> yeah. well, like, I don't know. Uh, should we just should we just all get a beer just keep, and just yeah, just keep going. going yeah, yeah we'll just, you know, it we'll, is late for you guys. It is beer time. Actually, bedtime. It's bedtime for you guys. What's it yeah. like? Almost almost midnight. Almost midnight. Almost midnight. It's okay. Yeah. It's like good. nine thirty in the morning here. I'm about to. Uh, I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna probably work on my power wagon today. You guys see my old school? Power yeah, wagon? You yeah, that? yeah. I like that. Yeah. I think I can share like my desktop here. I don't know. I don't know how to do that though. We've got to make you a, if we make you a presenter. One second. If we ever make you make a host. Well, we don't want to mess up what you're doing. No, uh, it's still recording. It's all good. And now you should be able to share your screen. To share screen. And then might even give you a couple options of what screen to share. I don't. Oh, share screen right there in green in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> one in the middle. Yeah. So just share. Just click on share screen. Yeah. It says one participant at a time or multiple participants. Oh, okay. So you, you made me the screen. admin. Let me yeah. just share my screen. Where's my desktop? <laughs> <laughs> you might have to minimize. Can you see it? Nope. No. I'm going to probably do something dumb and lose Yeah, it. we're going to break it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all been deleted. <laughs> so um, th this is what I'm going to call a Mike Carnamala mo moment. Oh, um, yeah, we've got to say hello from Mike. What, yeah, what, one of the other Garage Network guys, Mike, is uh, I think he's, he's your, one of your biggest fans, um, Kathy Bates style. Um but uh, he, he he just does so yeah with technology it just all goes wrong. If 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 Mike's doing something with his phone or his laptop, just forget <laughs> it. Put it in the sea and you go and fix cars. What's his, uh, What's his nickname? What's his nickname? Pocket down, Mike. <laughs> pocket down, Mike. If he wants to, if you're going to get a call at three a.m., it's Mike. <laughs> <laughs> accidentally calling you we're in a group with 20 other people <laughs> <laughs> sorry Mike I, I do love you buddy yeah. uh, but you deserve that <laughs> yeah. nice uh, yeah I think um, I think you've actually spoke with Mike he has um, he has a workshop in Sydney called 313 Automotive 
Um, and it's it's like the ultimate man cave. He's got a pool table and a bar and all the good oh, stuff. Nice. And That's we've good. we've all we've all abused it. That's good. You need one of those. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. In fact, uh, next week I I will be um, I'll be in California next week. I'm visiting my cousin. Um, he so my cousin lives. Uh, in Southern California, and we're actually we're going to be hitting the Sierra Nevada mountains. We're going to be doing some snowboarding next week. So, awesome. speaking of speaking of shooting pool and drinking beer, um, that's that we'll be doing that in the evenings and snowboarding during the day. So I'm looking forward to that. Excellent. Well, well, well deserved. I'm sure. Absolutely. Good, good breakaway. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> awesome. I think we'll call it a wrap. We don't want to take up too much more of your time, but that was no, awesome, this is mate. great. Yeah. Yeah, anytime feel free anytime you want to have another chat let us know yeah. we're in, we're in for it so yeah absolutely it's good to see faces to names now too you know um so absolutely. i definitely know both your both your names for a long time and to see faces is awesome and when we when we come together and we network like when we have the shows and stuff i've often said this we all need to have like a, an avatar like whatever we use as like our, our <laughs> yeah. profile picture we should have pins yeah. like on our shirts because yeah. that's the only way i know people like I, i've talked to people in the past face to face and really not know who they are until i leave that situation then i'm like oh i was talking to that guy and i'm like yeah. oh if i would have had that avatar or or profile yeah. picture image i'd be like i know who you are so anyway that happened so much last week. Do you know how many people I spoke to? Then you, they say the name, like, oh, yeah, of course. And then as they walk off, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Can we get yeah. to who that was? Yeah, exactly. Like, I've exactly. been speaking to this guy for two years online and I just met him. Yeah. And I, I feel like I almost had, like, who are you? You know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. It's horrible. Yeah. It is horrible. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, All right, well, Bloody thank hell, you guys. I, 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 thought, I, really, I thought you'd have been sorry. bigger or something like that. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to be I, taller. I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize you were so fat. You know, yeah, yeah. that's probably what I get. Yeah, <laughs> get that in, get that in just before we go, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't well, directed um, at you, Jeff. I was no, talking about no. myself. I, 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 I'm, just, I'm just being mean. I'm just being okay. mean. But uh, yeah, yeah. no, thank you, and uh, and uh, thanks for coming on. And uh, you know, thank you for all that you do. And uh, I'm sure yeah, the uh, the members are going to uh, uh, love seeing. There's a bit of a different side to uh, to Paul Danner. You know, you yeah. you've not got scantles coming out of your fingers. You're just a human no. being. Um, That's right. But you still are. You definitely you like the uh, automotive Rambo. I think that works. <laughs> I think well, I appreciate Can that. Can we get Others. cameraman Caleb to like put a bandana on it? And then, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Come on, he Caleb, make it happen. He could definitely do that. He could definitely do that. You know, what's a good look? Bandana and rosy cheeks. I feel like he's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that we'll get a kick. I'm, I'm, never, I'm never going to be able to look at your videos. And like, <laughs> just, all I'm going to picture is the makeup. It's great. We'll have to mention, I'll have to mention you in the next one, uh, Costa. So yeah, thanks mate. We'll have, we'll have Caleb, we'll have Caleb do something and put a Rambo, um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, okay, and I'll mention you as well. Thank, thank you very much. Awesome. That, that'll do, but I'll be done then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, looking forward to seeing this when it's when it's live. So you guys let me know um, when when that uh, when that happens, and and um, I'll I'll definitely share it on my pages too. So oh, lovely. Don't forget to join our private Facebook page if you are an automotive technician, and also subscribe to our YouTube and our podcast channel. They are all called The Garage Network. Thanks, guys, and see you next time.